the Horse and Zion project, uh, we've been developing for the last, well, quite significant amount of time, and we have made such significant progress over the last 18 months. I can really give you a fantastic update, and there's a really great opportunity for investors here, as the iron ore market has changed and is moving in our direction. We delivered our feasibility, pre-feasibility study in July 2017. It put us as the world's leading undeveloped high quality iron ore project. That's the world's, we're not talking state of origin here. Um, the demand and price for high quality iron ore is increasing. This structural shift will drive the development for our project. At the moment, our market cap is about $13 million, so there's a lot of upside. Investment in Carpentaria is a bet that we can secure a strategic partner to reduce the funding risk on this billion dollar project and unlock the value closer to the billion dollar NPV it has. I'm going to convince you that we will get that partner today. So uh, over the last 18 months, as I said, we've had some real milestones. Uh, it's caused a threefold increase in the share price. We've had customer engagement with lots of letters of intent. Uh, we have done a resource upgrade and more laterally we've delivered our pre-feasibility study. The trend is up. This is systematic project de-risking over the past 18 months. We are 100% focused on development of this project. Now, it's not just us saying it's the world's leading high quality iron ore project. CAU have run all the parameters of our project through their own models. This is a 62% uh, FE adjusted cost curve. You can see that our project is in the first quartile. That's right where you need to be to find the right strategic partner. In terms of high quality iron ore projects and where we sit in the basket of projects that we compete with, you can see that our operating costs are right at the front and you can see that our capital intensity is pretty close to the front. The iron ore market has a problem. High quality iron ore demand is increasing, but there are very few projects that can be competitive under the forecast environment. Horsens is the leading high quality iron ore project. That's why it will attract that strategic investor. So what are our results from the pre-feasibility study? They're pretty good, I've got to say. Based on a long-term iron ore price of $63 a tonne, um, got from CRU, our project returns are 18% and our equity returns are around 30%. That's pretty solid for a billion dollar project um, that can last for 50 years. If you look at today's prices, because we know the prices have gone up, that's a 30% project return and around 50% equity returns. The margins, 400 to $600 million profit per year. That pays for a lot of capital and it pays for a lot of rewards at the end. Our incentive price of development is below $60 a tonne. That's where it needs to be. In terms of our capital costs, $1.4 billion of pre-production costs. That's a capital intensity of $140 a tonne. That's better than Roy Hill. This is for a 70% FE product. Our operating costs, C1 FOB, $33. All in FOB, less than $40. 70% FE landed in China for $48 a tonne. If you take off the premiums, and that today is a conservative one at $25, that gives you a 62% basis of $23 a tonne. So we have low capital intensity and the development risk because of a whole lot of existing infrastructure. We'll, we will be cash flow positive at a 62% iron ore price of less than $30. This can ride through the cycle we are well placed for strategic investment. So, what about this high quality iron ore and the demand for it? That first chart shows that we are the world's leading product, 70% FE, and it is also the best pellet feed. Now, uh, we don't get a lot of market traction, but that will change, and there's an opportunity here for investors. The iron ore market is more sophisticated than is generally understood in Australia. We're not digging ship. Pellet and pellet feed market is around 400 million tonnes. It's the largest growth segment, according to CRU. Their comment is they see a clear shift towards pellet in Chinese burdens. 
virtually doubling over the next 15 years. That's an extra 76 million tonnes per annum. They think that's going to be fed by the local Chinese uh, domestic producers. We can displace them. We're higher quality and we're lower cost, and we will. In terms of the direct reduction market, which is another one that's poorly understood, it needs really high-grade materials. It's 100 million tonnes. It's big. DRI growth in the Middle East is constrained by the lack of suitable feed. Um, there's five million tonnes of spare capacity, spare pelletising capacity. Bahrain still are telling me if they can get the feed, they can sell the pellets. Well, they can't get the feed. New sources of supply are keenly sought. Steelmakers who can access this feed will have a com competitive advantage and therefore a reason to invest. We will get that strategic investor. There we go. So where's the evidence for the high quality iron ore feed um, and increasing demand? Well, quality differentials have never been greater. If you look, to, look at the first chart, the brown line is the 58% over the last two years. Hasn't changed. The light blue is the 62%. It's gone up a fair bit. The dark blue is the 65% price. It's more than double the 58%. And we're only talking 7% FE. We're 70% FE, OK? Now, that is a structural shift. In, in February, we posed the question, is that a structural shift? And is it likely to persist? In August, J.S. Jarks of Rio Tinto answered the question for us. I believe it is becoming more and more structural, referring to that spread. Why is it happening? High-grade ore is the only way to maintain productivity of your blast furnace as overall quality of inputs fall. Lower quality means more slag, lower productivity and more pollution. You can't mine 1.2 billion tonnes of iron ore from the Pilbara and Brazil every year without quality declines. Those with access to the high quality feed will have a competitive advantage. They will invest in Carpentaria. The other chart is the spreads. That shows you that um, 65% iron ore is getting more than $20 than the 62% today. It's, I think it's trading at about $100 a tonne. The 58% is getting $30 less. I know where I want to be. So a little bit of a, a story about iron ore because we're all pretty, been pretty cold on it for a while, but there's been reasons for that. The first chart, the brown lines are the rest of the world's steel forecast demand. You can see that it's going up. The green lines are the Chinese steel forecast demands from World Steel. The first green line heading downwards was done in April 2016. The second green line was done in April 2017. What you can note is that there's a 55 million tonne change upwards in the forecasts. What happened over that 12 months that made that change? The Chinese industry started to restructure, and you can see it in the second graph. In December 2015, you can see that the capacity utilisation starts to go up. That mean, that's because the closure of Chinese capacity starts to take effect. The corollary of that is the dampened demand from China is now reversed goes back to the fundamentals and production increases which, and steel prices increase. Their restructure is working. That's the bottom chart. And then the last chart is the compound average growth rate of steel demand for the, for the world is around 2.5% over the next 15 years. It's not fantastic, but it's strong enough, OK? That's about 40 million tonnes per annum. And if you convert that to iron ore, it's about 40 million tonnes per annum, OK? Demand is strong. Now, a little bit about our project. We're located 60 kilometres southwest of Broken Hill. I won't go into all the detail. I invite you to have a look at the website. There are no gaps in our project. We have solved all the, all the issues, OK? Um, our proposed production rate, 10 million tonnes per annum. Chalk resource, well over 30 years. The advantage that we have as a magnetite is it's incredibly soft ore that liberates into the best product in the world. The power is from the grid. You can see the red line there, very close. It's the Sydney grid, not the Adelaide grid. Water. 
defined in a high yield aquifer 90 kilometres south of site, we can get that water under existing regulations. The concept is to mine and process on site, slurry to Broken Hill, load the existing rail and either take it to Wyala or Port Pirie. We have port options. This is why the capital cost is low. There's, we have the world's best pellet feed. There's a local pellet plant in Wyala. We would like to see what we can do there and we're doing our best. Then it will be transshipment to, get to our customers in the Middle East and Asia. And this is where it gets interesting. Over the last 18 months, we have oversold our offtake. We're planning 10 million tonnes of production. We've signed up 12 with uh, the cream of the global steelmaking industry. And if they're not there, we're still talking to them. Letters of intent oversold. Iron ore market is segmented and sophisticated. The offtake partners understand the market and have signed up. Retail investors in Australia will catch up one day. Now, let's talk about why these companies are signing up and why the conversations are getting deeper since we delivered the PFS. Samarco so has collapsed. There's a big hole in that market. Formosa Plastics are building 15 million tonnes of steelmaking in Vietnam. They need iron ore feed for that. They made their first steel two months ago. Uh, they, uh, by 2020, when we're ready, they'll be at 15 million tonnes. Shagang is China's largest private steel mill, 40 million tonnes of production, 2.5 million tonnes of spare pelletising capacity, which no doubt they want to turn on. Mitsubishi and Gunvor are well-known global traders. They understand the market. Kuwait and Emirates Steel are DR producers in the Middle East that want to grow. They can't grow without feed, so they're likely investors, or at least they have a reason to invest we need to convince them. So our next steps, we're seeking $25 million for our bankable feasibility study. We think that we can do that and the approvals process in the next 18 months. Construction and first production will take another 18 months, so that's three years. These timeframes and investments are attractive to our strategic partners. This is the message today. So in summary, an investment in CAP is a bet that CAP can secure that strategic partner to reduce the funding risk and unlock that value closer to that $1 billion NPV. We delivered our pre-feasibility pre -feasibility study. It's got great interest from the global steel industry. Uh, over the past four weeks, I've been to the Middle East, I've been to England, I've been to Japan and Taiwan. There's great interest. The, they are supply constrained in the Middle East, DRI market. The Asian blast furnace market is seeking higher quality inputs for the long term. Now they're profitable, they want high productivity. There's no other projects out there. Remember, we are the leading high quality iron ore project. Horsens is, as I've said, so we're trying to convert that interest into BFS funding. Horsens is the world's leading high quality iron ore project in terms of operating costs, adjusted for quality, project returns at the long-term iron ore price and the iron content of the product. Those steel companies that can secure high quality feed or DR feed have an advantage over others. We have a low market capitalisation with significant upside when that significant investor is found and we will find them and we plan to find them soon. That's the opportunity. Thanks very much for listening.